My name is Kenny Dial and I want to welcome you to the scuba diving channel. This channel is for anybody that is aquatically inclined or just aquatically curious. My next guest, Emily, is an old friend. I think she has one of the most inspiring stories out there, not only from becoming an incredible independent instructor. She was in demand to be flown around on private jets because people wanted Emily to teach them, their family, and their friends. The real story here is the car accident and how she got through it. Emily decided to dabble in mermaiding and it kind of took off. So she's gonna share a little bit about that, how she got started and what she does with it now and how you can do it. So, welcome Emily. Before my accident, I had started kind of getting into the, the world of mermaiding. So being a mermaid was also possible. You know, having broken legs made it a little difficult <laughs> to rehab with, with that. I don't understand your broken legs it made it harder. I thought it was like a tail. It's basically a monofin at the bottom and a silicone like skin that comes up to your waist and your legs are completely, I don't want to say stuck, but they're confined in a tail. Do you feel a little like when you get in, do you get, do you feel trapped? I don't anymore. The first time it's definitely weird. You are neutrally buoyant in the tail. So, you know, if you're floating, you can float. And if you're descending, you can descend, but you can get into a sticky situation if you're not a strong swimmer. So having, you know, 40 pounds of weight and then when you're in the water, it will actually fill with water. So if you're not careful, it can drag you down. But your legs do get tired because they are moving around when you're actually in the tail and swimming or trying to flip it like up when you're on land. They're heavy. You kind of started dabbling in it because of the accident. Yeah, I was really passionate about diving and I'd worked toward becoming a scuba instructor and I don't remember how I stumbled upon it, but I saw a mermaid tail on like a Google search and I was like, there is no way that this exists. Like this can't be real. And um, the more I started looking into it, there really is a career as a professional mermaid. There's mer communities and different like mermaid tail making companies, people make tops, you know, then there's the mermaid performers and models and they can do birthday parties or festivals or just modeling. You really can take mermaiding anywhere your dreams want to take you, as cliche as it sounds. <laughs> mermaiding is real, you're really in the water. You know, obviously you guys are really mermaids. You know, people seem to love, you know, Instagram's really given a platform for that. And, you know, whatever the social media, whether it's TikTok or wherever it is in three or five or 10 years, now there's a platform uh, mm -hmm. for this stuff, which is really cool. So you can go out and literally just do it up and take a picture and that can be satisfying right there. Yeah, absolutely. What is the most expensive tale you've ever seen or heard of? The most expensive tale I've seen or heard of is probably in like the $40,000 range. <laughs> How much? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of like the silicone tails, like the ones that I have are more between $2,000 and $8,000. <laughs> yeah, it's it's no joke. <laughs> I want to back up. We just talked about tails. Um, going from a few hundred bucks from a cloth one to what you said, silicone is like the it's ideal. Like the top of the line, yeah. And okay. you can go anywhere from like the scales can be individually made or like a sheet of scales. You can add fins to the sides, the fronts, the back, dorsal fins, ankle fins, side fins that, you know, can come off. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of different options. You can get custom paint colors and the more detailed, the more you're spending. I have seen your Instagram and you do a lot of makeup and hair and accessories and stuff like that. You just bring your own stuff or are there professionals that do that? Is there a, a secret to doing that? Once you get into being a mermaid, you kind of go through a phase and figure out what you like and what's most comfortable for you. And you kind of develop what we call your mersona. And you have like your go-to tops and your go-to makeup look or your hair. And I'm always trying to find good hairdos you know, for being underwater and taking crazy pictures. I make a lot of my accessories, like my hair accessories or, you know, necklaces, all kinds of stuff. But yeah, you just kind of figure out what you like and what works and 
what's consistent. I'm assuming you probably have a little hack. I've seen a lot of shots in a lot of different locations on your page and obviously you're doing something to make that work. I figured out what tops to wear and what settings. I've had a few wardrobe malfunctions, which is not fun. So you've had a wardrobe malfunction. Yes. I'm assuming like the shells or whatever. Yep. <laughs> when you do a shoot, who is typically behind the, are there people around or is it just somebody you know as a professional? It kind of depends. I've been really lucky. I have a few friends who are really passionate about photography. So I actually have what I call my mermaid tribe and I've got my two best friends and sometimes they alternate taking pictures. Sometimes they'll both be snapping pictures and sometimes each of them will be taking turns muscling me around the beach or fireman carrying me. It's really good to have some friends who can hold your fin, literally. <laughs> so you gotta have a production crew. <laughs> yeah, it or, can or be. A tribe. Mm -hmm. My okay. tribe. Is that the official terminology? Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> I've done like birthday parties. The people who you're going to have like the birthday party for know like I will say, oh, I need to get ready so I don't spoil the magic. So we'll keep the kids inside or something and maybe send someone out. Or if I do water stuff, I try to have someone who will use even just my GoPro because who doesn't want to capture their children swimming with a mermaid? We just try to do anything to make someone else's magic happen. And as long as you have one other person, but two is probably the minimum magic number. What is the ultimate goal of mermaiding? Personally, I would like to take mermaiding to travel around the world. I would love to swim in aquariums and perform that way, just with you know my scuba diving and free diving background. And I mean, swimming with wildlife is so cool. And in an aquarium, you're kind of guaranteed to do it. So if I could somehow make the right connections or platform myself in the right way to get paid to travel as a mermaid, I think I'd be, be living the dream. Someone's starting out uh, in mermaiding right now, they're considering it. Maybe they haven't even got their tail yet. They're trying to figure out, you know, where to start. Tell them one thing. I would say work on being a strong swimmer. I think that would probably be the biggest thing is just to be comfortable in the water as a human per se, baby steps. You know, when I got my tail, there was no middle ground. You kind of dove right in, but now you can get a monofin, you know, you could practice with a monofin and then you could add the fabric tail. So you're actually feeling like your legs are confined and practice that way. Cause when you're in a full silicone tail, you have to practice being able to get out quickly. Like if, if a big wave is coming or if you're falling, I don't know. Mermaiding is not just for women. I've no, it is not. Anyone can be a mermaid, whatever gender role you identify with, I guess is the way to put it now. Any size, shape, person, the mermaid community is very welcome to, to everyone. Yeah, very diverse. Literally anyone can do it mm -hmm. if they want to. Exactly. Cool. If you want the full-length, uncensored interview, go to sweetwaterscuba.com.